All right, this is the Algebra 2 Practice EOC question number 24, and the question asks us which graph best represents the system of inequalities. Okay, so again, we're dealing with inequalities, so there are a few things that we need to remember about these. Whenever you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that means you're supposed to have a solid line, and whenever you have a less than or greater than, that means you're supposed to have a dotted line. Well, as we look, both of our answers are both less than or equal to, so that way we know that we're supposed to have solid lines. So again, we can kind of start eliminating bad choices, but we don't have any ones that have dotted lines here. Okay, another thing that we have to remember is that whenever we divide by a negative number, we must flip our inequality. Whenever we multiply or divide by a negative, you must flip your inequality sign. Okay, well, doing a problem like this, I always like trying to get my y's on one side by itself, so that way it makes it really easy for me to graph these problems, okay? So I'm going to kind of show you kind of what my graphs would look like over here. But first, with this first equation, x minus y is less than or equal to 3, I'm going to have to get my y or my negative y to be on one side by itself. So first, I'm going to have to subtract x. So I'm going to end up with negative y is less than or equal to negative x plus 3. Okay, well now I have to get rid of this negative sign here, so I have to divide by negative 1. And when I divide by negative 1, I have to divide everything by negative 1. So I have to divide y by negative 1, which is just going to give me a positive y. I have to divide negative 1 by negative 1, which is just going to give me a positive 1. And then three, a positive 3 divided by a negative 1, that's just going to give me a negative 3. But again, since we divided by negative 1, our inequality should, should flip, and it's now greater than. Okay? Well, in order for us to start trying to graph what this problem is going to look like, again, this is in slope-intercept form now, where we have to start with this negative 3. So we start on our y-axis at negative 3. And then from negative 3, we need to go up 1 over 1, and then connect that with a solid line. So it's going to look something like this. And then we need to figure out which side of this line we need to shade to. Because, again, it's an inequality. We have to decide which side it's going to get shaded to. Okay? Well, kind of a trick that you can kind of use is you can plug in the ordered pair 0, 0, and see what kind of a statement you get. If I plugged in 0 for my x and my y, I would end up getting 0 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 3? Yes, that's true. You'd rather have no money than having or owing me $3. Okay, I take the $3, but I'd rather have no money. Okay, so you're going to end up shading to the side that has 0, 0, that ordered pair on it, or if you have greater than, the trick is that you need to shade above it. Okay, so we would start off by shading up here. Okay, well now we need to do the same thing, but graph our green inequality or graph this next inequality okay well again we have to get it so that we have the y on one side by itself so we're going to have to subtract this x squared so we're going to end up with y is less than or equal to negative x squared plus 5 okay and again kind of your rules when you're trying to graph these you have a negative negatives usually going to flip your graph upside down so your parabola should be upside down or kind of looking like I guess you could say a lowercase n maybe if you want to go with that so all your choices should have an n going upside down okay and then this number on the outside is a positive 5 so that means that you need to move your parabola up to 5 so you need to start 1 2 3 4 5 your vertex is going to be up here at 5 and then you know it's going to look like an a or it look like a, an N. And then you just kind of need to figure out which part you need to shade to. When you're dealing with parabolas, you can pick the ordered pair 0, 0 as well and kind of plug it in. If it's true, you're going to shade inside. If it's not true, you're going to shade outside. Well, if we plug in 0, 0 for both of our ordered pairs, x and y, you get 0 is less than or equal to negative 0 squared. Well, 0 squared is just 0. Negative 0, that doesn't make any sense. Is 0 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. That's true. So you're going to shade everything that's inside of your parabola. Okay? So now that you have this here, your answer is going to be everywhere that it overlaps. So your overlapping section 
is this section right here in the middle. Okay, so you're trying to match up which graph looks just the way we have it here. Okay, well this one, our line is supposed to be going up from left to right. This one is going down, so choice F can't be correct. This one here, choice H, both our lines are in our parabola, they look correct, but the shading is wrong. Okay, so this can't be correct. Choice G, our line again is going down from left to right and we should have it going up so choice G can't be correct so it's leaving us thinking that J is going to be our correct answer because it line is going up our shading matches correctly and it's got exactly what we need good luck I hope this helps you oh yeah we forgot uh, this test is being taken after 1978 so most of you probably have calculators uh, we gave you the method for solving this problem if you don't have one or you want to do it by hand. So I thought we'd tack in and show you how to do it when you do have a calculator. Um, the reality is I'm going to use the TI-84 Plus because it's the one that I happen to have here with me. You can do it with most graphing calculators and it's very similar style. The issue is this is in standard form and the easiest thing to do when you have a calculator is convert it into uh, slope intercept form so get Y by itself, which we already did in the last one very well and I hope I don't mess up and get this part wrong that would be sort of sad um, so you get rid of the x you're trying to get y by itself you subtract x from both sides so you get negative x plus 3 because these are not like terms then we need to get rid of whatever's in front of the y so divide by negative 1 for all of them in my life I circle this set to remind me to flip this over because it's negative if it were positive I wouldn't but end up with y is greater than or equal to x minus 3 because the negative divided by a negative gives you a positive and the positive divided by a negative gives you a negative. Now the other one, that's the top one, the other one looks like this x squared plus y is less than or equal to 5. I'm going to draw my line, subtract x squared. Once again, no like terms, negative x squared plus Five, and y is already by itself. There's no a number in front of it and there's no signs, so that one's good. So I'm going to work out and graph these two things. Uh, the nice issue is on the calculator, for this problem at least, is that they're both solid lines. Usually you can shade uh, your graph, and I'll show you how to do that, but what you can't do most of the time is shade and get it to do the dotted line at the same time, at least not on mine, or as far as I know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go to the y equals button, and it gets me there, and then I need to type in the x minus 3 portion, so I'm going to type in, uh, here's the f button for variables, the x, then minus 3, then I need to shade it, so I'm going to click over to where you get like this little windshield wiper effect in front of your y, and if you turn it to the right a little bit, you'll sort of start to see that it's supposed to look like a wedge that goes this way, so which is a y is greater than scenario, so if you hit enter enough times, you'll get one that sort of looks just like the uh, the wedge. You can see it being popped out there. It's like pointing in the same direction now. Or you can just look at the fact that it's essentially showing you that it's shading the top half of the graph. For the other one, go down, click down to y sub 2. I'm going to go ahead and punch in the fact that it's a less than by hitting enter. It usually takes two times to get to greater than, one more time to get to less than. And as you can see, if you tilt it a little bit to the right, it looks basically like the less than sign. Then I'm going to go over and type in negative x squared plus 5. See, looks just like it. Then I'm going to graph it. Uh, you should be careful if on your graphing problem you have one that's a solid line and one that's dotted because the one that you put in first is the one the calculator will graph first. So you might need to make a mental note of which one it's supposed to be. Because sometimes the questions are exactly the same except the dotted line and the solid line are mixed. So just make sure that you have that taken care of before you do it. So here's my first one. It'll come out. And here's my second one. It'll come out. What I'm looking for is the overlapping space. And the overlapping space is this dark section here. So if I look at um, J, it's or, sorry, F, it's still wrong because this one's going in the wrong direction. Uh, this one the lines are right, but the graphing is obviously not. Uh, for G, the uh, the line's still wrong. You've got this negative. That's wrong. And in this one, this is exactly it. See the overlap here and the overlap here? So your answer is still J no matter how you do it, but I thought we'd show you how to do it with the calculator as well. So good luck.